Item Number SCP-173 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Item SCP-173 is to be kept in a locked container at all times. When personnel must enter SCP-173's container, no fewer than three may enter at any time, and the door is to be relocked behind them. At all times, two persons must maintain direct eye contact with SCP-173 until all personnel have vacated and relocked the container. Description Moved to Site-19 in 1993. Origin is as of yet unknown. It is constructed from concrete and rebar, with traces of Krylon brand spray paint. SCP-173 is animate and extremely hostile. The object cannot move while within a direct line of sight. Line of sight must not be broken at any time with SCP-173. Personnel assigned to enter container are instructed to alert one another before blinking. Object is reported to attack by snapping the neck at the base of the skull, or by strangulation. In the event of an attack, personnel are to observe Class 4 hazardous object containment procedures. Personnel report sounds of scraping stone originating from within the container when no one is present inside. This is considered normal and any change in this behavior should be reported to the acting HMCL supervisor on duty. The reddish-brown substance on the floor is a combination of feces and blood. Origin of these materials is unknown. The enclosure must be cleaned on a bi-weekly basis. Item Number SCP-302 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-302 is to be kept in sight under safe three protocols. Artifacts should be handled with gloves at all times, and utmost precautions should be taken to ensure that the artifact does not make skin contact with unauthorized personnel. Any personnel not scheduled for testing that begin showing signs of SCP-302's effects may apply for termination. All subjects suffering from SCP-302's affliction should be terminated after no longer than eight days due to data expunged. Description SCP-302 is a small tin sculpture with a bronze patina finish depicting two ants carrying a leaf. Whenever a human makes direct skin contact with the artifact, they will invariably find a single, small, relatively harmless ant on their person within two hours. This ant may belong to any of several different small ant species, and its appearance rarely causes much alarm. It is of note that in all recorded cases, subjects have always distinctly noticed this first ant and fully remember seeing it. Thereafter, an exponentially increasing number of ants will appear on the exposed subject by day. Throughout the entire day, the number of ants that appear seems to be in the range of 3x to 5x where X is the number of days since initial contact with SCP-302. As time progresses, the ants not only increase in number, but also change in species. Smaller, minimally harmful species appear at first, later transitioning to larger species, or species with more painful stings or bites. Ants seem to appear out of the nearest unobserved space. This includes from under clothes, nearby objects, or if left with no alternatives, bodily orifices. Ants seem singularly preoccupied with exploring or attacking the affected individual, and will not stop until either themselves or the subject is deceased. Addendum 3021 Subject of Test Log 2 was a single D-Class personnel. Subject was told he was to participate in a study testing how a week of relaxation might affect the performance of D-Class personnel and was kept in a relaxation chamber with exercise equipment, various books and magazines, and a color television. Subject was exposed to SCP-302 without his knowledge. Test Log 2 Days 1 and 2 Subject spends his time in leisurely pursuits. Subject expresses great satisfaction and reports nothing out of the ordinary. Day 3. Subject reports small ant problem 
and admits it is probably his fault for letting crumbs fall all over the couch and carpet. Subject admits he noticed an ant two days previous, but did not think it was worth mentioning. Subject reports great satisfaction otherwise, and requests a can of bug spray. Day 4 Subject reports that ant problem persists despite his best efforts to spray the room, and that the ants have become more numerous, and occasionally painful. Subject reports that the ants seem bigger and different from those he saw the day before. Subject still reports relative happiness with the experiment. Day 5 Subject reports great annoyance and increased pain, as ants are now nearly always on his person. Ants seem to have changed once more, becoming more aggressive and agitated. At this point, Subject clearly suspects ants are not of a normal nature. Day 6 Subject in great pain On average, five tropical greenhead ants are seen to appear every minute on Subject throughout entire day. Subject becomes aggressive due to pain and demands to be released from chamber. Pretense for experiment is dropped and Subject is restrained and given medical attention. Day 7 Subject in great pain An average of 25 tropical fire ants are seen to appear every minute on Subject. Subject requires continuous ant removal. Day 8 Subject is heavily medicated and unconscious through majority of day. An average of 140 bullet ants appear on subject each minute. Rapid ant removal and anti-inflammatory medicine is necessary. Day 9. Data expunged. Subject and experiment are terminated. Item number. SCP-359. Object class. Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-359 is to be contained within a 30 meter by 30 meter by 30 meter concrete structure. This structure is not to be entered between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. local standard time. Any monitoring of SCP-359 during these hours is to be done via security cameras installed within the structure. SCP-359 is to be fed one adult pig every other day. Acceptable substitutions to this diet must be cleared with Agent and Dr. All remnants of SCP-359's prey are to be completely cleaned out of the containment structure by 8.45 p.m. the following day. Description SCP-359 appears to be a metal sculpture of a red-tailed hawk with a wingspan of approximately 4.3 meters perched atop a 12-meter arch. During daylight hours, Approximately 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. local standard time, it displays no signs of movement and does not respond to any external stimuli. However, it has been determined by the Foundation that between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m., it displays the typical behaviors of an adult red-tailed hawk, apart from being nocturnal. SCP-359 is apparently capable of flight. The mechanisms through which it accomplishes this have not been determined as its wings are too short to allow for flight. SCP-359 was originally located just south of in the United States. It first came to the Foundation's attention when local foresters began finding dead bodies of white-tailed deer, Otocoileus virginianus, in the area within a one-kilometer radius of the sculpture, which looked to have been preyed upon. The white-tailed deer has no natural predators in the state of Investigation officially began when motorists on the stretch of state route that passes by SCP-359 reported that the hawk was not on top of the arch. On the same day, a local farmer reported finding the sculpture in his field, standing over the body of one of his cows, which had injuries consistent with predation by a large bird of prey. The farmer was administered a Class A amnestic and fed the story that the cow had died of natural causes and its body eaten by coyotes. Route was closed for repairs, and SCP-359 was transferred to its current containment site and replaced with an immobile replica. Addendum 1 Prior to containment, no evidence existed that SCP-359 had ever attempted to prey on anything besides hoofed mammals. However, since being contained, it has attacked, killed, and eaten four D-Class personnel who entered its containment structure during restricted hours. 
Investigation into the cause of this shift in dietary preferences is ongoing. Item number SCP-475 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-475 is to be kept in a watertight containment locker in Storage Unit 45C of Site-36. All testing with para-religions requires permission from the Site Director. To prevent religious groups of interest from learning of the object's existence, knowledge of SCP-475 is to follow Level 3 Info Security Protocol. Description SCP-475 is an ornate sculpture of soap, depicting an unidentified Pope. Inscribed at the base of the statue is the phrase, Cleanliness is next to godliness. Analysis reveals the object to be composed of long-chain saturated fatty acids, CH3 minus CH2N, totaling 89.7% of its mass, with the remaining 10.3% corresponding to attached as the hydrophilic head. It is believed that the gives SCP-475 its unique properties, but all attempts to recreate this compound have failed. When SCP-475 comes into contact with water and is applied to the skin, all accumulated foreign contaminants are removed. Tested materials include dead skin cells, perspiration, bodily parasites, mold, dirt, and detergents. Post-test examinations have shown that 100% of foreign contaminants are removed, a statistical anomaly. This process only occurs when used on human skin. All attempts so far to use SCP-475 on non-humans have failed to produce its anomalous effects. Testing on anomalous animals, such as SCP-1845 or SCP-2050, is pending approval. Unlike typical soaps, the usage of SCP-475 does not damage it. SCP-475's secondary anomalous effects manifest when it is used on a professing member of an organized religion. Subjects universally report greater mental clarity, showing greater adherence to church doctrine, and rate at least 15 centi akiva more on the Brandon Spencer piety scale. These effects increase in intensity the longer the subject uses the object, culminating in local reality changes, signified by all bodies of water within a 5 meter radius, turning into an equivalent liquid that is considered holy in the subject's religion. Examples of these changes can be found in Test Log 475. Addendum SCP-475 came under Foundation containment when insubordinate elements of the Horizon Initiative relinquished control of it. These elements cited a desire to maintain unity and prevent infighting as to why the object could not be kept. SCP-475 was allegedly recovered from the residence of the Catholic Cardinal, who was found deceased from injuries consistent with upside-down crucifixion. The following materials were also provided. Access Memoirs of Access granted. I write this document to preserve the personal revelation invested in me. Over these past years, I have grappled with my faith. Having committed it to paper, the idea seems absurd. I, a leader of the faith. I, whose vote has determined the successor of Peter. I, who has undeniable proof of God's glory. The initiative, for all of its missteps and blasphemy, has provided undeniable proof of God's glory. Proof that has to be withheld from the world due to inscrutable agreements with occult forces who do not have salvation in mind. Despite this undeniable proof, I wrestled with fears that God is not almighty. How can a God so glorious and almighty stand by as false idols exert their forces over man? By the grace of God, my fears have been quelled. The night before, I beheld an apparition of Mary. To try to capture the glory of it would be futile, but it is an experience too magnificent to withhold. We were out at sea. Below the waves, I could see the church penitent, awaiting purification. Further below that, deep beneath, there was creation. All around us were the gilded statues of saints, each linked to a church far below us. The Virgin Mother herself was resplendent, situated atop a pedestal, the pedestal carried by a many-winged creature of fire. In her right arm, she held the Savior. In her left, a block of marble. She confided in me, told me of my purpose. 
Encased in the marble were the keys of heaven, the church's magisterium itself, the authority to commune with saints. I was to take it, free the keys, and cleanse the church militant. Then, all will be made clear. When I woke up, there was a block of soap on my nightstand. Queer, but I do not question the machinations of God. Every day since that night has been hazy. I have worked with a fervor to accomplish this mission. Even to this moment, I have my doubts. But I am human. It is in my nature to doubt. If there is one thing I can be certain of, it is that I am a cog in God's plan. Addendum SCP-475 approved for extensive testing with para-religions. Test Log 475 Note Due to the scarcity of para-religion adherence under Foundation control, SCP has been approved to create suitable test subjects. Test Subjects Religion Roman Catholicism Duration 3 minutes Results Water transmuted into a mixture of olive oil and balsam, consistent with the chrism oil employed in various Catholic rituals. Stigmata manifested in subject's hands. Notes Subject was heard reciting Confiteor as anomalous effects took place. The stigmata healed over the course of the next three days. Test subject's religion. Roman Catholicism, said a vacanist. Duration, five minutes. Results. Water transmuted into mixture of olive oil and balsam, consistent with the chrism oil employed in various Catholic rituals. No overt anomalous effects observed. Notes. Post-test interview indicated that the subject accepted the current pope as rightful Pontifex Maximus. Test subject's religion. Pentecostal. Duration. 11 minutes. Result. Water transmuted into pasteurized grape juice. Subject began exhibiting glossolalia. Subject displayed xenoglossy in the post-test interview. Notes. Subject made the following requests. Access to Site-36's sickbay. Access to any demonic entities housed on site. A pet snake. Requests denied. Test subject's religion. Hasidic Judaism. Duration, 60 minutes. Results. Testing was aborted after failure to produce anomalous results. Subject vehemently denied any change in behavior or mindset. Notes. Cant counters measured a percent increase in ambient Hume levels. Further testing warranted. Test subject's religion. Broken church. Duration, 13 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into machine oil. Subject began manifesting symptoms of SCP-217 infection. Notes. Subject was placed under quarantine. Within 48 hours, the SCP-217 infection present in its system had been rendered inert. Subject transferred to Site-234 for further study. Test subject's religion. Cogwork orthodox. Duration. 14 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into machine oil. Subject proceeded to transform into metallic ovoid object, bearing numerous markings on the surface. Notes. Resultant object pending classification as an instance of SCP-1564. Test subject's religion. Maxwellism. Duration. 15 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into thermal adhesive. Testing terminated, as subject began complaining about a splitting headache. Analysis indicates that part of subject's brain had been replaced with cybernetics, inconsistent with standard Maxwellist augments. Notes. Subject claims to have experienced a continuation of The Signal, a hallucinatory vision all Maxwellists experience after undergoing implantation of their first augments. In this vision, Data expunged. Test subjects religion. neo -sarcism. Duration. 30 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into blood. Subject began morphing into an instance of SK biotype. Testing suspended and subject sedated. Upon resumption, 
subject calcified into a roughly ellipsoidal object and began emitting thermal radiation in the microwave range. Notes. Further testing with neosarchic cults suspended in order to prevent apotheosis events. Subject currently in secondary storage at Site 10. Test subjects religion. Children of the Scarlet King. Duration. 45 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into blood. Subject underwent a series of transformations, turning into progressively more advanced. In the Divide caste system, variants of the DV bio type. Transformations culminated with the subject becoming a colossal squid, Masani Chotuthis, Hamiltoni, and expiring. Notes. Genetic testing indicates that the blood is from the common sperm whale, Physeter macrocephalus. Test subject's religion. Fifthism. Duration. 25 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into 100 specimens of the subphylum Asterozoa. Subject melted into candle wax. Notes. Suspected connections to SCP-1523. Test subject's religion. Church of the Second Hytoth. Duration. 30 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into blood. Subject's forehead developed pigmentation in the shape of a seven-pointed star. Subject displays previously unknown knowledge of Hytothan rituals and the language of Ortothan. Notes. Analysis indicates that the blood is from the common seven-arm octopus, Halifron Atlanticus. Test subject's religion. Children of the Torch. Duration. 17 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into an aqueous flame, similar to those created by SCP-2814. Subject then melted into a waxy substance, yet remained modal and cognizant. Notes. Subject expired after 24 hours. Remains stored on Site-23. Test subject's religion. Australian Church of Australia. Duration. One minute. Results. Data expunged. Note. Further testing with the Australian Church of Australia requires unanimous approval from the O5 Council. Research into preventing AU class end of the world scenarios deemed a class 11 priority. Item number SCP 569. Object class Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-569 are currently held at Bioresearch Site-66. Contained instances of SCP-569 are to be sealed within one meter cubed steel crates and immersed in ice water baths when not under research. If containment is breached, aggressive instances are to be neutralized through application of aerosolized liquid nitrogen. Passive instances are to be herded back into a containment crate and returned to containment. Personnel injured by SCP-569 may be treated via amputation of affected surfaces. Severely affected personnel are to be terminated. Matter produced by agitated instances of SCP-569 is to be ground into powder and utilized in site construction. Description SCP-569 appear to be a collection of 46 animate, disembodied, floating human heads. All instances are identical, resembling a bald man in his late forties. Analysis reveals that SCP-569 are sculpted from Silicaga marble. No further anomalous materials are present. SCP-569 will usually congregate into a loose swarm and float aimlessly at a mean height of 10 meters. Individuals will randomly shift between several identical expressions, ranging from apparent joy to considerable distress. No pattern or probable cause for these shifts may be found. They are hypothesized to be simply random. In addition, instances of SCP-569 appear to react to temperature variances. Temperatures below 4 degrees centigrade render them inert. If an instance of SCP-569 is assaulted by a human, a sudden movement is perceived in its direct field of vision, or a sufficiently sudden loud noise occurs in the immediate vicinity. The affected instances will transform into an aggravated state, 
and attempt to destroy the source of aggression or noise. This transformation involves said instance seemingly dissolving into the shape of a human skull, then launching a colorful material spray in the general direction of its target. This material will rapidly harden into colored marble, coating the target in a heavy, sharp shell. This marble produced from SCP-569 is chemically similar to the normal silicoga marble that SCP-569 consists of, but contains simple pigmentation to lend to its various hues. In addition, the colored portions are fused, solid sheets of marble. No seams, cracks, or similar structural flaws are present after setting. SCP-569 will continue launching this material at its target until the target has been completely covered. Material will fuse at the molecular level to the target's surface. At this point, the instance will revert to its calm state and resume aimlessly floating. Addendum Cross-testing Due to recent developments, proposals regarding cross-experimentation with SCP-2860 have been suspended. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.